In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, the writer of the book of Revelation invites us into song. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. We are invited into the song of God once again. A song we heard long ago, a song first sung to us when the world began. To join animals and sea creatures as we return back to the Father, the song of love. It is a glorious song, and we delight in singing it with all the power that it conveys, the power to evoke love within our hearts, to heal our brokenness, to send our spirits soaring toward the God who will not let us go. Yet, the text of this song is rather odd when you stop to think about it. To the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor. We have a scene in heaven of a throne room which, okay, we understand that part, but what is the situation with the Lamb? Why are we worshiping and singing the praises of a Lamb? How would we explain this to a neighbor or a little child? Theologian Barbara Rossing explains it this way. In Revelation, we worship and sing to the Lamb because of Lamb power. Yes, Lamb power the power of the Lamb. But before I talk more about that, I need to fill you in on what things were like when this book, the book of Revelation, was written. What kind of power was understood to be at work at this time? It certainly wasn't Lamb power. It was a period in history when the Roman Empire was in its heyday Rome was the big enchilada, the invincible power to contend with. They called the shots, ruled with an iron hand, and made life miserable for most of the empire's inhabitants. Rome was so into itself and the exercise of power that kept people underfoot. They also went crazy over the idea of victory. Victory, victory, victory. They emphasized power that always wins, always ends up with victory over everyone and everything. The Romans were so obsessed with victory that the name of their goddess for military victory was named Victoria which is the Latin word meaning victory. And in Greek, another language of the empire, the word for victory is nike, nike. So the Latin word for their military goddess was Victoria. The Greek word for their military goddess in Greek was nike or nike. Yes, some of you are chuckling. The great corporation Nike gets its name from the Greek goddess Nike. Nike. She is portrayed as a winged goddess 
and inspired the wing, the symbol on my dirty Nikes. The symbol on all Nike products is named after the Greek goddess Nike and follows the inspiration from her as being a winged, a winged goddess. So here comes the writer of Revelation. Tradition has it being the disciple John, and he gets the word out during this time of the Roman Empire's heyday. I have news for you. The power at work in the universe is not the Roman Empire and its crazed celebration of victory. It is lamb power. The power of the lamb who was slain, who loves us, and whose blood set us free to be a kingdom serving God the Father, as the writer of Revelation puts it. So what does this all mean for us? Where does lamb power fit in in our lives and in the world today? Perhaps the biggest revelation in Revelation is that the lamb defeats evil, not by force or violence, but by love and forgiveness. In the book of Revelation, we are invited to join in the song that praises the vulnerable, slaughtered, but standing lamb, the lamb crucified but risen to life, as Rossing describes it. In the book of Revelation, we learn the truth about power. It is the power of love that conquers evil, not by fighting, but by faithful loving. In today's lesson from Revelation, we see that the Lamb has won the battle and is enthroned over the universe for eternity with God the Father. All this without lifting a finger. There is no malice in this lamb, no judgment, only love, only forgiveness. Rome has it all wrong. Rome has bought into the lies of the ego and has forgotten the song of God, the song that sings sweetly forever in our hearts of our oneness with the Father and the Son and each other. In the book of Revelation, we are invited to sing that song once again, to sing our way into a new vision for the world. Rossing reminds us of, of how we have been doing that for centuries. Handel's Hallelujah Chorus. When the saints go marching in. The Battle Hymn of the Republic. African American spirituals. Let's get together to fight this holy Armageddon from Bob Marley's One Love. All of these have been inspired by the book of Revelation and the power of the Lamb. We are all invited to follow the non-violent lamb and to choose to exercise his power, lamb power, to join in the song of all creation that speaks of the life-changing vision where love and forgiveness are the main event, not a song that beats the drum of military victory or sings the praise of power that destroys. We are all invited at each Eucharist to join with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven and sing back to the Father, holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, yet not a power that the world knows, but the power of the Lamb gentle, compassionate, 
intimately connecting us all, taking our broken hearts into God's self. Just when things feel hopeless, overwhelming, and despairing, we are invited to break into song. One writer invites us, listen, and see if you can remember an ancient song you knew so long ago and held more dear than any melody you taught yourself to cherish since. Beyond the body, beyond the sun and stars, past everything you see, and yet somehow familiar, you know the ancient song and know it well. Nothing will ever be as dear to you as is this ancient hymn of love the Son of God sings to his Father still. And so we sing. We hear the melody. We move out into the world with a new song. To the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen.